New sir. I think it's a disgrace that 10 years ago, of, well, in 1993, they were, we paid hundreds of thousands of pounds to protect these guys' identities, and now one of them's 27 years old and will probably spend hundreds of thousands yeah. more giving him a new identity. So what would you do? So I, what would you do? What would I do? I, I don't think, the, to be honest, I think Jamie Bulger's family deserves to know, you know, why he's going back in. Mm -hmm. what, what would they do with that information? What would they do with that information? Yeah, well, how would that help them in their loss? They want the information, Will. They yeah, ask for the how information. How will it help them? These are people who've suffered terribly. How will it help them to stop the suffering? Question if is, they ask for it, they should Do you think there's a danger it? of him reoffending in respect of their family? It will, doesn't the, seem likely the, to me. The question is whether, they have, whether the public has the right. I don't believe the, the public, public do the right have the right. That's the question. I don't think the public do, right. does have the right. The woman in the no. centre there, what do you think? In black and white? Yes. I agree that it shouldn't be in the public interest to know but, however, if this person's a reformed character, then he should have done everything he can not to have been back into being prosecuted. Well, do you know what the actual guidelines are on being returned when you're under an indefinite sentence and been being returned under licence? No, I don't, but that's under the law, and those... They're quite minor infringements. You can get returned to prison for quite minor things. But if things. he's a reformed character, why is well, he doing... Well, you know, the, well, we the odds are that there are people in this we audience who've done the sort of things who were they released under licence would be returned to prison now. Yeah, but he would have known the guidelines. You don't know what he's done in those years. Well, oh, Carol, you... Well, that is exactly well sorry, that just clarify what you're saying. What kind of things are you saying you can be returned? It, it could be non-payment of fines. It could be a, a traffic he, offence of some kind. You don't... He really knew these, he it could, knew these be, he could have smoked so some marijuana. That well, could get you returned illegal. to prison. Yeah, but you know, lots of people statistically in this audience will be marijuana smokers. So, do you want them all returned to prison? <laughs> you know. It's a... All right, the man, the man up oh. there on the on the left, you, you sir, really and then I come to the woman there. Yes. What I don't understand is, apart from the parents of Jamie Bolger, how any was any of the worse off for not knowing why he's going yes, gone back exactly. to prison. I don't understand that at all. Carl <laughs> Waterman. I think it is important that the parents are told. And it, I, this was a, a terrible crime. The two boys came out. It is indicative of another thing that I, I feel is that we are constantly nannified and told we shouldn't be given information. And in that way, anger grows. And when little Sarah Payne was murdered by the paedophile Roy Whiting in the year 2000, this is significant because there was news this week as well, there was a, a lot of um, defence of the, um, sexual those on the Sexual Registered Act and then there was this terrible event when um, uh, various people down uh, in the south of England took it upon themselves to have marches and so on. Anger grew, but there was, I think that people can accept this information in a very responsible way, and that has been shown with the introduction just recently of a system where uh, if you are concerned about a new partner that your uh, ex-wife or ex-husband has and you are concerned that they may be on the sexual uh, offenders list, well, you yeah, can then... No, you're, but it's... You're diverting. Well, just I'm not on, diverting. On Venables, what is it, you want, no, the point what is it is, you want the public to be told about Venables? I, I believe the families should be told. Not the public generally? I... Yeah, I, yes, I think we should. If he has reoffend, if he has well, been right. involved in various altercations over the years and he has had some form of special treatment, why? Why are we spending these huge amounts of money defending somebody who was such a, ter <laughs> was such a terrible crime? Right. Man up there in blue. You. I think it's important to know. I mean, the family, I agree with what Baron Williams says about his identity should not be revealed no. because there will be lynch mobs who will go for him. We don't want to see that in this country. The family should know because now it's out in the media. But I would like to know about his rehabilitation, about how this young boy, as he was when he got involved with this tragedy, you know, which was a tragedy for him as a person, and now he's 27, how, what the rehabilitation has been since that age and what's, what's he got involved how, in? Now? How would you know that without breaking the point of the rehabilitation, which was to allow him to re-emerge into society anonymously, unconnected to that crime? Well, it was just interesting what Will said, of course, because we don't know what... It, it could be something yeah, very minor. Yeah, right. Um, but if it's something... I think it's already been in the media leaked that it was actually a, a fight that he got involved with. 
and that definitely needs to be cleared All up right. now. The woman in green here, then come to you, Rose. <coughs> yes. yes. Uh, I wonder if it's really the public who would like to know this information or is it the media who would like to create a frenzy so people buy the paper and talk about it, yeah. first of all. Yeah. Second of all, for uh, Carol, you talk about Sarah's Law. I don't know if you know that is the research been done and yes, there are had some good things happened, but the, they uh, flagged up the issue as that a lot of times uh, ex-partners, mainly ex-husbands and boyfriends, use this law against them wife or ex-partner's new boyfriend as a revenge right. to get information. No, I'm sorry. No, okay, I'm no, sorry. Don't go into that. Boris Johnson, well, I want to stick with this I, I, just, I, just, I just want to, to agree really with what um, I think Will and, and Shirley and, and Andrew are, are saying because the, the, no matter, of course it was an appalling, appalling crime but the fact is we do not know the circumstances under which he, he broke the terms of his license. We don't, we don't know that. And in the history of this country, as far as I know, there have only been four people uh, for whom uh, the state has constructed uh, new identities. Mm. Uh, and they are uh, Mary Bell, right? Maxine Carr, Robert Thompson, and John Venables. That's it. And uh, it is an incredibly exceptional and difficult thing to do. And if there is the slightest prospect, it seems to me, of making sense of this and of allowing uh, justice to work, then I think that, uh, uh, that Andrew is right and we should leave this to the courts. We should leave. Uh, the, the law to work its course and uh, of course you know, if it turns out that what he has done is a, uh, a grave and serious thing that is going to be uh, going to necessitate his uh, imprisonment again uh, then of course it is right in my view for the, uh, for, the, uh, for the family to know but as long as there is the possibility of making sense of what we have done as a society in trying to give this individual uh, for all his appalling crime, to try to give this individual a new start, then I think we've got to stick with it. All right. I'll take two or three more points. The woman here on the left. I'd just like to agree with Will. Um, I think that this information is completely irrelevant and that the law will deal with him in the way it sees fit. And he won't be released again unless they feel that it's safe for him to be. Right. So I don't That's think that anyone needs to know. To the, the woman with fair hair there on the left. Um, I believe that uh, we should know whether or not it's a minor uh, incident or if it's something major because I think it is in, in the public's interest. To what end because, would you want to know that? Why, why, uh, how would it help well, you? Well, because I don't think it's going to rest. I don't think that people will just accept that, um, that uh, or it will go away. I think it will keep on reoccurring. Would, would you want his identity revealed? No, no, that, not no. at all. No, I just, just think the fact that of what the fact done. he's going to be back in prison for the rest of his life or for 20 years or whatever. And then at least people will have peace of mind that, that um, uh, you know, that he's not out there again right. and uh, mm. able to cause the, the, similar sort of right. grief. The man, the man in the, uh, there, in the, you sir, yes. Yeah, um, what I can't understand about the law at the moment is that um, you murder someone and, and you, you, get, you get life, but they, these two people haven't been given life, have they? They've killed someone whose life is no longer there. They should not have been left out, let out at all. Yeah, they are on life sentences. That's the whole point. That's why they can be returned to prison. But there's something weird, isn't there, in the kind of British collective imagination about child killers, because there's a presumption that these boys, who were 10 years old at the time of the crime, must be more evil than an adult killer. Is that what people are thinking? Are they all thinking, wow, they must be super evil? You know, let's turn it round the other way and just float the weird, strange idea that they maybe didn't really know what they were doing. People who read the transcriptions of the, the case at the time and heard these boys' testimonies heard very, very confused 10-year-old children talking about something. So people talk in terms of the killers of Jamie Bolger as if they were some kind of Mingale figures, some kind of incredibly evil people. What a frightening thought that they might not have been evil at all. And even to talk about it, to talk about it in, as you do, and as people here, and even I caught Shirley saying it in terms of murder, murder is malice aforethought. I read the transcriptions of the Bolger trial and, and there was no real evidence of malice aforethought in that crime. I so, you know. I think it's also very important to understand they are under license for life. Yeah, for life. So they will be monitored for life and it's because it, there has been an apparent breach of the so terms of the license. But that can he I is say, being returned. We, most no, of us yes. would not regard that as a life sentence. Being out and, do, and, and being able to work and get married and have children, that's not a life sentence. Is that what you'd rather they had? 
No, I'm saying, but you're, you're saying it's a life sentence because they're out living it a normal life. It is a life, life. sentence. It's not a life sentence. You can be returned to prison at any time. The parents of Jamie Bulger have a life sentence. The man here. Let me go on. Yes? I think it needs to be considered that even the minimum of information that is released, the press are likely to dig around and find just a nugget there of which then his identity will be revealed and then it is going to cost hundreds of thousands of pounds no, no. to give him a whole new identity the all identity over again. The identity will have already been compromised, you, yes. can, you can bet on that, because it will be compromised by people in the prison who are within it, who will be in a position to sell information. It will already be compromised. All right. There's still hands up, but I think we'd better go on, because we've got a lot of other topics. This one about uh, a development in 